Okay, now I'm going to walk you through an application of those basic probability rules by reading a problem. And so I always recommend when you work a, a word problem with probability is that you start with labels. And I'll use the labels A and B and C and so forth. And I'll let those labels represent the appropriate events. So if you read this problem, it's an NCAA ba college basketball conference. It talks about having the probability of having a, of a team in the championship game. And I'm just going to kind of highlight a couple things here. Notice it says, for example, over the last 20 years, the ACC had a team in the championship game 10 times. The SEC had a team in the championship game eight times. And then it said these two teams, conferences had both had teams in the championship game only one time. Okay. So then they give you some other information. It was Arkansas and Duke and so forth. And then the requirements say use the data to estimate the following probabilities. So when I start to think about this, I want to figure out, okay, what are the events they're going to be asking me for? And then I'm going to attach the appropriate labels before I do anything. So when I look at letter A, it says, what is the probability that the ACC will have a team in the championship game? Up, up at the top here, I'm going to say, let's let A, event A, represent the ACC in the championship game. And then I notice that another event is on part B. It says, what is the probability that the SEC will have a team in the championship game? I'm going to let B represent the SEC in the championship game. So by doing labels, I think it will help you simplify the material. And then as I keep reading, the only other thing going on here, it, it keeps on talking about the ACC and the ACC having teams in the championship game. So I can basically look at this exercise as basically there's two separate events. You got ACC or SEC, okay? Now, once I've identified that, the next question is to try to get the probabilities. Now, the method that we're going to use here in your textbook, they talk about the empirical approach, but quite simply, we're going to look at this in terms of a relative frequency type of historical idea to come up with the probabilities. So the way you would do that is the sample data was taken over 20 years, so we got 20 games to look at. And if the ACC had a team in the championship 10 times, we could basically say that the probability of event A would be equal to 10 divided by 20. 10 times out of 20 outcomes, or you could say that is 0 0.50. So right away, we just use this relative frequency idea to assign a probability to the ACC having a team in the championship game. And then you can do the same thing for the SEC. You can say that the probability of event B would be if I read it, it says the SEC had a, uh, had a team in the championship game eight times. So notice that would be eight divided by 20. And so as you can see, you can put these in fractions or, you know, I, I tend to like to, to put everything in decimals. And so okay, if you take eight, 10 divided that by 20, you would get that to be equal to 0 0.40. So I just figured out that the probability of the SEC, which I'm labeling as B, to be the probability is 0 0.40. Now, like I said in the previous slide, I like to use this intersection, A intersect B, to see if either of these two events overlap or intersect. And if you look at the word both, right here it says both, these, these two conferences had both had teams in the conference in the championship game. I want you to use that label as both, okay? to represent the intersection or the and, like A and B from your textbook. So if they've each had a, had a team in the championship game only one time, you would say that probability would basically be one divided by 20. So again, we're using the concept of 20 because it's 20 years or 20 games. And then if you take one divided by 20, that's 5%. Or again, I like to use the decimal, I'm gonna use point zero five so we've just defined the probability of a is 50 percent the probability of b is 40 percent and the probability of a and b to be about five percent or 0 0.05 if you notice that would basically take care of parts a b and c now when you get to letter d the question says what is the probability that at least i'm gonna analyze at least one team from these two conferences will be in the championship game and so that's an either or at least one it means you know, either or or both. So guys, letter D, that's gonna be your addition law, okay? So if you ever see at least one in a sentence or if it says either or, here's your or, you'll know that that's gonna be your addition law. And I'll remind you the formula is simply the probability of A 
plus the probability of B minus any intersection. And so if we just put it into the formula, you'd have 0 0.50 plus 0 0.40 minus 0 0.05, and the answer would be 0.85 or 85%. So, which basically means there's an 85% chance there's going to be at least one team from either of these conferences in the championship game. That would be letter D. So there's your union rule. And then finally, the last question says, what is the probability that the championship game will, have, will not have a team from, from one of these two conferences? And I want you to think of that as to be the neither. And so if the union, draw a picture here, if I kind of draw my little Venn diagram, you've got A intersect B. If that union of everything in A and B is 0.85, and that represents having a team in the championship game, everything outside of that union would be neither or the complement. So to answer the letter E, you just have to take 1 minus 0.85, and you'd get 0.15. That's the complement of the union. And so there's basically a 15% chance that neither team would be in the championship game. So again, this is just some basic applications of the previous illustration I showed you on basic rules. But typically, if you ever want to get a neither, you're, off, you're, you're required to answer a neither type of question, think complement of the union.